Metro Manila being the seat of power, governance, seat of economy, and uh, millions in terms of population and also building and housing density um, is at risk. And what happens in Metro Manila will also affect the whole Philippines. And in fact, uh, if you look at the whole uh, Metro Manila alone, around 34,000 deaths. And if we want to rebuild houses and buildings, we need 2.3 trillion pesos. And that excludes um, infrastructure damages. Uh, injury is uh, close to 130,000. And uh, if we can relate it to our capacity to absorb such a number of uh, victims in terms of bed, num uh, bed capacity of hospitals, this would overmatch the 40,000 bed capacity. So we have to plan and uh, respond before, before this happens. We have some idea of what can happen. We need to lessen the number of houses and buildings that will collapse. But which among the buildings in Metro Manila? This will be mostly the residential, one to nine stories, and mid-rise buildings, and not the very high rise. In fact, most of the casualties will be on the low rise houses. Now, of course, the priority would be lessening the number of people that may, uh, may die or get injured. Our assessment, based on our estimated modeling of the earthquake scenario and the effects to buildings and population, uh, roughly around 48,000 will be the casualty that would be Manila, Bulacan, Rizal, Cavite, Laguna. And of course, uh, that will be the priority, but we also need to look at the economic resiliency of Metro Manila. For every city, for every province, for every region, there are surrounding major faults. And so, if we prepare Metro Manila for an earthquake, then we have to look for the fault that will deliver a magnitude that will cause the most severe shaking. And out of this, we looked at uh, the West Valley Fault as the source of the earthquake that will cause the most severe shaking. We can say that if we strengthen our houses and buildings, even though it will shake violently, but the buildings will not collapse, then people will be safe. If not for the scenario, we will not be able to really understand the scale of the problem. And that's the, that's the whole disaster imagination that I am advocating. For every disaster that we will face, we can anticipate this using experience, science, and technology. Try to develop scenarios, and our preparedness should match the scenario that will occur. We also have this idea of preparing how to respond before an event would happen and preparing a recovery plan before the disaster would happen. And these are all being done or should be done for an earthquake in Manila and for any disaster that should happen all over the country. Now, please note, however, the big one for Manila will not affect the whole country directly and other cities, other provinces have their own big one to use. So our program at DOST FIVOX is to develop these scenarios. How do we go about this? We have developed the software. Uh, the maps that I have been showing uh, to, to media and to the public uh, are developed by a software that we developed. It's called the Rapid Earthquake Damage Assessment System. You just input the magnitude, the location and depth. You, you can determine the intensity of shaking whether there will be liquefaction or the ground behaving like liquid or quicksand, or whether there will be landslide or the tsunami will, will be this high and how fast it will arrive. And we can estimate the casualty, the actual death and the injury from slight to severe, and also the impact. So we have developed tools so that local governments and the national government can have a scenario. So, I think this is the, the right way of preparing rather than not knowing what can hit you and you just respond to it when it hits you. Definitely, our response and our recovery will be very slow.